I'm often asked by teachers which is the best drone for them to buy as part of their learning experiences in the classroom and the school. So I thought I'd address that by having a look at some of the common drones that some teachers are already using. So starting from the smallest, we have both the Parrot Mambo and the DJI Rise Tello. So really, really similar. The Parrot Mambo was discontinued late last year. The Tello is still on the market. Very, very similar drones, nice and small. They do both have a camera in them. The Mambo has a camera just in its, in its belly, but also as an attachment on the top for forward facing photos and videos. Whereas the Tello is the camera just in the front here, a slightly better camera on this one. That's a five megapixel camera. Now both really good drones for working indoors. I don't really recommend using them outdoors. They're really heavily affected by even small breezes. Wonderful for teaching concepts of how we use drones safely. I use the Mambo at, at a university level for both my undergraduate and postgraduate students and I find this a really, really good drone to, to teach basic concepts in a really safe and effective manner. Now if we want to step up a little bit from that to get something with a better camera, we have for example the Spark. So this one here has the camera on the front but it's on a gimbal so you can point it downwards as well so it is definitely a better camera and then all the way up to something like the Mavic. Much, much bigger drone, much larger risk profile, much more expensive as well, but the camera is significantly better. So it really depends on what it is that you are trying to achieve with your learning with your students. If you want to create a more professional level photographic or videography type experience or even get into mapping, then something like the Mavic is going to be better for you. But the chances are you might only be able to have one at your school. Now for me, I like to teach with students getting their hands on as much as possible. So teaching a whole class of 30 students with only one drone up in the air that someone else is flying, for me that's not really a great learning experience for them. If the, if the objective is for them to work with the data once it comes off, then great, that's fabulous. On the other hand, if you really want the students to be getting their hands on with the drones, Something like the Mambo, we can, we can fly lots of these at once. So we've had up to 18 of these flying at once and students work in teams of three and they get that full experience of being able to code the drone, deal with mission planning and various different scenarios and even take those aerial photos. So while it may just look like a toy, I do recommend that you really think about what your use case is and opt for the smallest drone that you can get away with. So this reduces your risk profile and of course reduces the financial expense at the end of the day. And if you can get away with using something that may be categorised as a, as a toy, then I'm all for that. And like I said, I use that at the university level way before students will progress to something that they're actually going to be capturing data with.